Today, I'm going to show you how to create this interesting procedural snow landscape, complete with these prints that look like maybe they've been created by some animals or maybe vehicles or something. And this is what our end node setup is going to look like as well. Just want to say thank you to everyone who subscribed to my channel. I just hit 3,000 subs the other day, which is great. And thanks to everybody as well who has purchased one of my Gumroad products. It really encourages me to keep going. But now on to the tutorial. To set up our scene, let's go ahead and get rid of that cube and bring in a plane. I'm going to change the entire middle area to my shader editor and then change the top right to my uh, 3D viewport. While I'm hovering over the shader editor, I'm going to hit N to get rid of that shelf on the right. And let's go ahead and change this material. We'll put that uh, material that was on our cube on our plane. And zoom in a little bit here and make this a little larger so we can see it a bit better as well. Hold down Z while over this window and go into rendered mode. We're going to be doing some displacement, so let's change this to the Cycles Render Engine and change it to Experimental. And if you have a GPU as well, go ahead and select that option. Come down to the Modifiers panel, and we're going to select Subdivision Surface Modifier. Make sure you click Adaptive Subdivision, and if that's not available, you just didn't enable Experimental Feature Set here. So back to the Adaptive Subdivision, change it to Simple, and the Levels Viewport will change that to 6. Let's come down to the material properties and we're going to uh, just enable displacement by coming under settings here and where it says displacement we'll change this to displacement only. Let's come up to the render settings again and under subdivision I'm going to change this dicing rate render to 4. Uh, the lower this is the more it subdivides. I just found I got good results here. You can change it however you want but this is what I did. Then I'm going to remove this light from our scene. Just zoom out, click on that and hit X and delete it. And we're going to bring in an HDRI by clicking right here and next to color here. I'm going to go ahead and select environment texture and then click open and just find where you've got some HDRIs. HDRI Haven is a great place, a great website to get some free ones. And I'm going to use Cape Hill 4K. Just click that in and now we've got it lit here. Next let's come to the top left where it says object here and change this to world. This is going to allow us to adjust our HDRI. While this is highlighted here, hit Control T. It's a Node Wrangler shortcut, so if that doesn't work for you, you just need to enable Node Wrangler, and that's by going into Edit and Preferences. It's a built-in add-on uh, add in Blender that just allows you to do a bunch of stuff. So I'm going to adjust this mapping node here. I'm going to set the Z at negative 0.03, and uh, this Z rotation, I'm going to set this at 20. Again, this isn't something you need to do, but if you want the same results as me, it's just something you need to do there. Then come to the top right, and make sure your object is selected. We're going to hit S and 4, and that scales us up by a factor of 4. Make sure you're in object mode when you do it. It's just going to allow us to get in a little easier with our camera. Things are going to be so tight when we're choosing an angle. Then hit N, and we're going to adjust the Z rotation on this guy as well to negative 43. And again, you know, this is just to get the same results that I'm getting. Come up here to uh, the top left again and change this from world to object so we can see our material again. Okay, we're all set up and we can start working on our texture here. I'm just going to move this principled BSDF out of the way for now and we're going to bring in a noise texture. We're pretty much just going to be using noise textures for this today here. Let's just go ahead and hit Control shift left click and that gives us a quick preview of what's going on here. And we're just going to place a color ramp right after this, uh, just like that, and then run this into a displacement node right here. And this is going to go into the height we're going to run this output into the displacement here. We might as well look at our uh, principal BSDF while we're doing this as well. We're going to change this scale to 0.1, so it's much more subtle. We can see it's uh, made a little bit of a bumpiness there as well. This is uh, about the angle that I was looking at right here. I'm going to change the scale on my noise to 0.5. I'm going to leave the color ramp as is, and I'm just going to uh, put something that I can control the height of this individual displacement here uh, just with a math node right here. Change this to multiply by just hitting M while you select that. And I'm going to change this value to 6. Then while this noise is selected I'm going to hit Control T and make sure this is coming out of object as well. It's going to make it a bit bigger. And uh, let's go to this displacement node here. We're going to change this mid-level to something higher. I think it had it at 2.1 at the end there. Just brings it down a little bit so we can see what we're looking at a little bit better. Now let's do a second noise channel here. I'm going to grab all three of these nodes to save some time and hit Control shift d and that's going to duplicate it while keeping it attached to this mapping node. 
I'm going to change the scale in the second noise to 0.2, so it's a little smaller this time. I'm going to change this color ramp here. We'll bring the black up to 0.29, and the white is going to come down to 0.59. And then uh, this multiply, instead of 6, we're going to bring it down to 1. And then we're going to add these two together here. So I'm just going to duplicate this multiply, put it here, click here, and just hit A, and that changes it to an add. And then we're going to add these together. Now we have both of these noises added together. The order that you do this doesn't matter. You could have this one on the top or on the bottom. Uh, it doesn't really make a difference in the final outcome there. So what we're going to do is we're going to add some noise textures now on this line right here, right after the uh, texture coordinate. So I'm going to bring in a noise there and actually duplicate it three times. Then I'm going to bring in a mix RGB, put it after there, and duplicate that as well. I guess I said duplicate three times, I meant duplicate twice. So there's three in total of each of these. I'm going to plug object into color two there of that uh, first mix. That color output is going to go into color two of that second mix, and uh, this color output is going to go into color two of that third mix. This first scale, we're going to set this at 150. Second scale, we're going to set to 20. And this third scale, we're going to set to 2. So we need to decrease the influence of some of these scales, particularly these larger ones, which is really small detail here. So this first factor, we're going to set at 0 0.999. Second one, we're going to set at 0 0.99. And this third one, we're going to set at 0.6. We can see we've got some finer detail in here already. It's starting to look pretty good. Next up, I wanted to create some tracks or some prints in the snow, like an animal or you know a vehicle had been through there at some point and then it snowed some more on top of it. So to do that, uh, I'm going to duplicate this noise and color ramp with Control Shift D. I'm going to do this three times. This top noise scale, I'm going to set this to 150. This middle noise scale, I'm going to set to four, and this bottom one, I'm going to set to two. This top color ramp. Let's adjust the black. We're going to put that at 0.43, and the white will move to 0.55. This middle color ramp, we'll set the black at 0.58, and the white is going to go at 0.65. This bottom one, we'll set the black at 0.62, and the white is going to go at 0.67. This top one here, let's take a look at what this looks like. We can see it's got this interesting texture here. Some of it's stretched. That's coming from these noise textures over here. I think that's fine. I think it adds some interest. Uh, with just this noise texture, we'd have tracks all over the place, which I don't really want. I think it looks a lot, a lot better if you kind of minimize that, and uh, it looks a little bit more interesting if there's less uh, detail all over the place. So these two noise textures down here are going to be used to mask it out. So if we look at this one here, this is one mask, and this is the second mask. So let's go ahead, first of all, mix these two together by holding down Control shift and right-clicking from one to the other, and that creates this mix right here. If you look at this guy here, um, we're going to plug this one into the top socket and this one into the bottom socket. So it looks like this here, and we'll leave this as a default 0.735 gray. We're going to do that one more time with this guy here. And we're going to do the same thing. We plug that in there and plug this into the factor up there. And now we can see we've got these patches of this noise showing through. Then I'm going to grab one of these multiplies and just put it on this line right here. Uh, this is going to be something we're going to have to turn way down because we really want way less detail than before. This is going to be at 0 0.05. And then what we'll do is we'll just add it to this other displacement here by duplicating this add here, putting it on that line, and then just running this into that bottom socket. Let's see what we're looking at here now. We can see we've got tracks in certain parts of the snow, and then smoothness everywhere else. Let's also just change the detail on this noise texture, the one that's set to 150, uh, and that's making the tracks. Let's change this to 4. It might not affect it that much, but uh, this is going to be controlling the detail in these little areas here, so I think it'll look a little bit better. So let's choose a camera angle here by finding a nice spot in our viewport and then hit Control, Alt, and 0 on the number pad and that should set your screen as uh, the camera view. Then click on your camera and hit G 
and move it around. You can hit GZZ and zoom it out, or you can hit R and Z and rotate it like this, or R and X and X R X X rather and rotate it like this here. There's a bunch of different things you can fine tune it here as well. But let's render it out and see what it looks like so far. Here it is so far. Uh, don't worry about these artifacts too much. Those are going to get cleaned up. We're just looking at the extent of these prints and how deep they are, and just seeing if we want to adjust it. So let's look at if you wanted to change the effect of those prints in the snow. Let's look at this color ramp right here with control shift left click. We can see these prints coming through. If we wanted more prints, we'd need to increase the white values coming out of these two color ramps. So we could turn these down, for instance. We get a lot more prints coming through. Uh, we could do the same to this color ramp right here. I'm not going to worry about that, though. Uh, we could also come to this multiply here. This changes the depth profile of those prints. So if we decrease this number, it's going to be shallower prints, and if we increase it, it's going to be deeper. Make sure you don't change this too much. Maybe change it to 0 0.06 or 0 0.04 or something similar because this value is quite sensitive. I realize as well this mid-level here in my final render it was set at 3.9. So that's going to move the whole thing down a little bit. Again, it's totally up to you what you want to do, but this is just how you get the same results as what I got. So let's start working on the actual texture here, the stuff running into the principal BSDF. So I'm going to go ahead and grab this noise and this color ramp and hit Control shift d and move it up. And then I'm going to grab this color ramp and hit Control shift d on this guy as well. Just move this principled into position here. The scale here, we're going to set to 10,000 and set the detail at 4. For this top color ramp, let's change this bottom value to a 0.4, no actually, sorry, a 0.6 gray. And we'll change that position to 0.32. This top one will leave at white, but we'll set it at 0.78. And this is going to go right into the roughness. Then this bottom color ramp, let's change this black to 0.32 again. And this top one's just going to go to 0.78. This is then going to run into a bump node, which I'll create. Go ahead and plug that into the height, and plug this normal into the normal on the principled BSDF. We're going to change this strength to 0.05 and just leave the distance as is. Now we're going to set up some subsurface scattering. It's kind of like when you're holding a flashlight behind your hand and you can see the light traveling through your skin. The same thing occurs with snow. So we're going to try and create some blue-green tones in here. And so we're going to set this subsurface value at 0.1. And then this subsurface color, we'll leave it white. This base color, by the way, is just at 0.9. Uh, I think it's set at 0.906 as the default. I just put it at 0.9 to be more exact. We're also going to change this subsurface radius here. So we've got three values, and I was kind of thinking it was helpful to think of these as R, B, and G, or RGB, pardon me, red, green, and blue. So right now there's primarily red coming through. This would be good for skin. It's not as good for snow. So I'm going to change this top value to 0.1 and set these other two at 0.2. I guess that was already at 0.2. I'm going to set that bottom one. That's point 0.2 as well. Alternatively, I think we could also just set up an RGB node and run this into the subsurface radius and then just kind of choose a blue color. That seemed to work. I don't know if it's a very good way of doing it, but uh, it seemed to get the job done. Let's now render this out and see what it looks like with the subsurface scattering. Looks pretty good to me. I really like the look of this, uh, this snow print here. And you can also see the subsurface scattering and these kind of bluish, greenish tints coming through here, especially in this area on the right. Let's do one more thing here, and that's going to allow us to create a seed value. I held shift and right clicked and dragged through there to create a node reroute point, and I'm going to bring in a math node, a vector math node actually, more specifically. And now, uh, if we set it at add, we can plug something in here, or we can change these values, and it'll change the iteration of what we're seeing here, infinite possibilities, just by changing these, which are basically seed values now briefly look at some of the ways so we could change this output here in our uh, 3D viewport. First of all, with any of these noise textures here at the beginning, we could change the size and it would change just the kind of the size of those textures, just uh, manipulating the surface of the snow. And then we could change these mixes here and that would change the influence of each individual texture that's kind of connected to it. So if we change this to 0.9 for instance, this texture would have way more influence on this. Uh, probably too much, and that's why I've got this set so low. The next way we could uh, change this around that I haven't mentioned is this noise texture here is responsible for the size of those prints. So if we change this to something like 200, 
be quite a bit smaller. And if you change to something like 50, they'd be much larger. So keep that in mind as well. And this is the, uh, the roughness and the bump. So if you're finding things are a bit too shiny, maybe come up here to this color ramp and try changing this so that the colors are a little closer to white values. Maybe drag this down or change that color altogether. You could also come to this principle BSDF and change the subsurface scattering settings. Let's say you're not happy with the amount of blue or green coming through uh, this, this snow here. You could change this to something like 0.2 or 0.3. This is just how I was happy. But the way that you get to know this stuff better is by playing around with it. So ensure that you do. So that's it. I hope you're able to see everything I was doing today and how you could change it around. And as always, if you are confused about anything, just let me know in the comments and I'll see what I can do to clear that confusion up. Thanks for watching.